Welcome to Cobb Conversations on the Business of Brands with Sudeep Chawla and Sharvan Raghavan. I recently read Lay's is reducing the palm oil in the chips they sell in India. Is that what sparked the topic for today for you? <laughs> it actually did. I also read it. I think you've got it right. Okay. And uh, and you know rather than just looking at it from a ingredient point of view, I was actually starting slightly broadly to say that why is this happening and what is it that these brands and there are a number of such instances so what is it that these brands could have done better and from that point of view i came to saying that impact of culture on marketing it's not brands impacting culture you're talking about culture correct. impacting brands correct it is actually the other okay. way and that's that's what i was saying that a lot of our enthusiasts would have read case studies about how Uh, brands have impacted culture they've created right. pop culture they've created you know uh, there are a lot of references in pop culture about brands we all hear how pepsi shaped youth of us or how coke created this entire you know thing about red in christmas red and white in christmas and all of that yeah so it's happened in india too right? yeah i think yes and but i think the the um uh, the belief to be able to create it in india came from their parent market where they were able to successfully do it yeah and in fact we have mm-hmm. few more great examples in india you know the one of the first and the dearest example is cadbury the whole thing around you know redefining meetha and how indian audience looks at meetha from son papdi to rich dry fruit collection is a big cultural shift right you know we know that there have been uh, companies that have created shift in culture because of the work that they have done hmm. but today's discussion is about the other way around <laughs> yeah so how has culture how does culture impact marketing so that was the starting thought in my head okay and i was just reflecting on some of these actions which have recently happened i follow a food farmer in fact i met him in one of the uh, tedx conferences as well and we spoke right. a little bit about chocolate and my experience in mondelez etc uh, okay. since he has <laughs> already shown great affinity towards uh, bon vita so um, <laughs> and and i've seen the sort of action that companies like cadbury Nestle and now PepsiCo uh, Lay's have uh, taken uh, you know after he has started speaking about reading the ingredient list and the problem with sugar and palm oil right specifically and the difference in the ingredient list of uh, these companies products in India and in European or American countries right so i have a layman's question mm-hmm. he is not really doing intensive research to figure out what is there in every product that's being sold mm. he is basically getting people to read the label correct the label's been there always correct why do you think this is having such a big impact if he's just reading the back of pack ingredient list i think uh, so there are two parts to it one is that you know what he's asking people to do is to read the back of the pack so that you make informed decisions as simple as that as plain as that but where i think the uh, you know the root of this lies is in one of the culture shifts that i want to talk about i will talk about many more later mm-hmm. but one of the key things and i read this also in one of the presentations that an mtv marketing manager made hmm. yeah M- okay. mtv has this uh, they commission this youth research every year and therefore he presented themes of various things that they you know observed in youth etc etc and one of the key you know uh, they, i don't remember how they framed it but i called it uh, centralization of trust which is all about you know youth and the consumption audience today placing trust in only themselves and not in the government or large institutions or private companies etc okay yeah, there was a time where we used to say ki agar if government is doing it it must be right if tatas are doing it it must be right if it is coming from such a large company it must be right 
over a period of time the sort of news and uh, happenings that they have grown up on there is significant amount of mistrust that this generation has on institutions is that because of the information that's available to them also, publicly yes now that they don't need to rely only on the judgment of these institutions to decide what's best for them right they have more than sufficient information and misinformation to take calls on their own in fact that was my next question yeah how are they able to tell the difference or are they not telling the difference i think most of them are not telling the difference but still if if anybody is interested if you search hard enough you will find sufficient uh you know articles on either side of an issue exactly and so therefore you can then make a uh, make a choice make a call right, right. because a lot of these uh, uh, uh topics scientific or non scientific operate at the at the edge of you know uh, established scientific logic right right there so there is some amount of research but it is not conclusive and therefore it is left to the people to decide right i've seen reports that say tobacco is not harmful correct so, so there are different kinds of reports Milk that are available can, yeah there are lots of reports there so at least there is sufficient amount of data and information available for everybody to take their own inferences and conclusions but what that has done is that it has made people less trusting of large institutions yeah and thereby reposing trust in only themselves understood now what okay. has happened therefore is you were asking why is it creating waves because because people want to trust themselves mm -hmm. and that is what food farmer is asking them to do right read the label make the choice on your own and hence i think it is resonating more than anything else hmm yeah understood so therefore when i was thinking through mm -hmm. this was one of my abstractions that why is it creating the impact that it is creating what are the reasons are causing this cultural shift so you know my point is slightly broader to say that there are a lot of cultural shifts that keep happening from time to time okay and too often we as marketers get caught up in whatever we have designed and something that has worked we have brands of 500 crores 1000 crores 1500 crores etc already running and therefore we believe in this fallacy that whatever has happened till now which has led to this success will lead to success ahead very true very very true right yeah but some wise men have always said that what got you here may not get you forward won't yeah. get won't, won't get you okay. there so therefore i think this is an invitation to all marketers to constantly keep questioning their basic uh, premise basic offer etc itself and the subject of today's episode is keep questioning especially from a culture point of view as the culture changes assumptions change okay and this got sparked in my head because of some conversation that i was having with somebody in r&d about bonvita okay yeah so uh, and the conversation was around you know how much sugar is needed what is needed etc etc and something that he said stuck with me uh, his statement was that in certain point in time at certain point in time indians were calorie deficit and sugar was supposed to be a rich source of calories right and therefore at at some point in time this was considered a good dietary supplement right but now the times have changed and so therefore now people look at it differently and the calorie sources are sufficient right i i get that point i get that change there mm. but you said marketers need to understand these broader shifts in culture and figure out what it means for their product right i'm so how how do you do that how do you because you do insights mm. how do you understand this broader cultural shift i think uh, we have made this point earlier Mm -hmm. about the fact that when you go meet consumers 90% of the interaction should be about them yeah only 5 10% should be about your category and your brand mm -hmm. so marketers need to bear this in their heads all the time so that they are able to understand what are the current pain point shifts changes that are happening in consumers life mm -hmm. and therefore always have their radars or antennas up to capture if there is anything happening in the larger cultural context okay right i would also say that the primary responsibility of this 
would lie on the marketing leadership of an organization as in the ethics side of it yeah not just the ethics i would say that too often your product managers brand managers are focused on getting the product the four p's of the marketing right but the marketing leadership is the one that should you know really focus on the cultural larger cultural shifts and you know therefore find ways to harness some of that information and constantly judge for its impact on products as well as marketing got it so okay. one part is responsibility with the senior marketing team second part is translating that responsibility into some sort of a action mm-hmm. which allows them to harness it via social media or via some of the young managers etc mm-hmm. and spend some quality time thinking about it its impact on the current scheme of things can they hire these youngsters who belong to the new generation directly oh i think uh, part of it is that every year you induct new people into the marketing team so just listen to them ha listen to them a lot of them come into your company also because your company would possibly get them for their first jobs etc right right so listening to them and not just your marketing folk but new guys who have joined in sales team and obviously when you're meeting the consumers etc is such a rich source of uh Uh, information insights as well as the reflections on the culture that those guys are growing up in Got and it. many of those would could dr- be drastically different from what you knew earlier mm-hmm. and from the time that the uh, could be different from the time when the brand was last refreshed so that therefore there is responsibility on marketers to uh, you know completely be alive on this side of the society okay now just to elucidate what i was saying earlier sharan uh, i spoke about some of the cultural shifts one of the cultural shifts that i spoke about is centralization of trust right that i trust myself the second thing was all around you know i i see that the latest generation is all about experimentation they are happy to do all sorts of experimentation okay but i see this with, uh, with the advent of technology uh, with all kind of you know advancements happening all the time everybody realizes that there is significant risk everywhere hmm. right so at one point in time in previous generation people used to be very wary of new things because they didn't know what it will do i see that there is significant uh, uh, proclivity to experiment but everybody is looking for some kind of security hmm. right so therefore if there is a way of secure experimentation that is something that i see picking up very very well what is the security need to come from is there a, a right to believe or reason to believe here yeah so i think various ways one is when suppose you you are talking about a crypto platform okay yeah, or an investment platform hmm. now uh, the need to get compounded interests the need to become rich or wealthy has led to significant amount of you know youngsters younger generation get into investing very soon right there are lot of influencers etc who talk about its virtues etc etc and hence therefore there is mushrooming of platforms of such kind right, right. now the platforms which make them feel secure give them the security that they'll not be swindled or their interest will be protected etc Mm-hmm. are the ones that will you know be able to take them on this journey because they are experimenting with something right they have little money but they are you know kind of putting it on uh, on the shelf mm-hmm. to get some returns later in life okay right part of it is about losing money second part of it is about losing trust and respect mm. at that stage youngsters are keen to prove themselves to their parents also they don't want to make wrong decisions otherwise they lose they lose the trust and respect in their parents eyes so it all comes from there so therefore right. there is this thing around secure experimentation another one that we will notice is uh, is around good for me good for everyone okay right Perfect. so you know at one point in time we knew that we have so many people in india so therefore uh, you know everybody wanted to secure their own interests Mm-hmm. right so that you know and you knew that securing your interest will come at the cost of somebody else's 
zero sum game it was a zero sum game we were a we were a resource crunched country right right no no more now mm-hmm. so therefore not only are people looking at you know uh, positive sum games but environment has also come into consideration now so therefore uh, you will see a lot of a lot of thumbs up for good for me good for environment good for climate sort of a good for earth sort of categories sort of campaign um, kind of drives etc so that's another shift that i see that you know somehow youngsters now have a broader horizon of impact they believe that they can impact the climate climb impact the environment at our point in time in fact i never used to believe that i can impact the organization that i'm working in <laughs> so <laughs> which takes me to the next one you know which is about anything is possible okay now you know look at shark tank look at various stories of you know people from modest backgrounds becoming big in life hmm. uh, people believe that no amount of deprivation in terms of education finances exposure can prevent them from making it big in life absolutely and i remember seeing this change in front of my eyes you know th- and this was way back when i was working on gems mm-hmm. uh, and i used to meet mothers and mothers i used to ask them what do you want your kids to be etc etc and i started noticing from 2012 13 onwards that mothers in mumbai at least used to start picking up and saying that my uh, my kid wants to be a dj i am supporting her i took my kid to trials in dance little india or whatever those series were yeah. junior dancer little dancer etc right because he dances very well and i want him to make the career in that field so therefore there was consideration around you know some of those fields as well right uh, where i say when we were growing up we only had three careers engineer doctor or loser <laughs> so <laughs> unfortunately it's changed drastically now drastically it's correct. still go, got some way to go but it's drastically changed and touch wood for that correct so therefore anything is possible is another thing that people believe in so you know there will be 15 other things like this i'm just talking about three four things which are more than evident now right and therefore i'm just putting this as an invitation to all marketing organizations to think about some of these cultural shifts spend some time ruminate on what could be the impact of these on your product or your you know service offerings and then accordingly make changes and not only react but these will also give you an opportunity to lead the change and therefore you might be the first one in the industry to do so and thereby you know gain affinity gain trust from the consumers and it might therefore help impacting your brand positively rather than just reacting once the consumer has moved up and you are trying to mitigate risks that's the only invitation i want to lay it out in front of all the marketing organizations that's fantastic sudeep because i have a very different point of view on on what's happening i think it needs a little bit of nuance mm. because because food pharma they were the started there are everybody else saying did you know Cadbury dairy milk has got sugar. I'm like, of course it's got sugar. <laughs> Even meat has got sugar. Mm. When people do this, mm-hmm. they need to be a little more nuanced to say why something is wrong, and not just go around bashing up brands because brands will take notice and people will also take notice. Correct. Just for views. And in doing this, if they could alt- offer alternatives, and not every brand that's giving you sugar is a is an evil brand. so you want yeah. to know the difference correct and it's not just about even palm oil right because of palm oil there are also cost benefits to it yes it's mm. not healthy but whoever told you chips are healthy even chips cooked in regular oil still not very healthy so people need to need a little bit of nuance but the fact that this cultural change is happening and it's driving brands to take notice is something that's fantastic mm. and in, in today's times where we say the younger generation has got no responsibility these cultural shifts that you talk about today i think are are showing them in great light and i think it's all sounds like a good change for the brand the people and pretty much the country too correct hopefully the marketing fraternity takes notice and takes action accordingly 
Thank you for listening to Cobb. Conversations on the business of brands with Sudeep Chavla and Sharvana Raghavan. Subscribe and learn more at cobcast.net. That's C O B B C A S T.net. Thank you.